Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanchman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and in the last video in the series on field programmable analog arrays, we installed an Ubuntu image with a tool chain for developing for the FPAA's Professor Jennifer Hassler and her students and other colleagues have pioneered. So let's try one of the examples. The ability to run on actual hardware remotely is down at the moment, I believe. So let's try the simulator, L1 simulation, low pass filter. Will you create your own in the Scilab console? No, I wanna use whatever the default is. All right. Oh, there goes the simulator. So the simulator is running without me having to choose a board. But I think if you're to run it on an actual board, you would need to select which version. Let's see what else we have here. C4. Okay, I'm going to say no because I don't want to make my own input function. I want to just use whatever's in this default example. Let's run this simulation. Ah, doesn't that look fun? All right. So... There's a standard C4 block. I guess we could change different parameters in there. Let's see what else we have here. Let's close that out, close that out. Something back here. Oh, there's that older one. Let's close all that out. What else can we simulate? L2 simulations, infet, sure. So I guess we have different measuring mechanisms here. In case you're wondering, no, I don't really know what I'm looking at. All right. Let's run that. So I guess this is simulating an NMOS Medellica. Okay. Ah, there's some sort of transfer function curve. That looks fun. Some other curves. What is Medellica? I guess it models stuff. I haven't heard of it. I wonder if that's a separate package that the Scilab people integrated or maybe Dr. Hessler's group implemented. Here's a PFET. Let's simulate our PFET. Okay, there's some more curves. That was fun. Let's see what else? L2 simulations. OTA, Operational Transconductance Amplifier. So I love OTAs. I use them extensively in my Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis class. So if we click on this, oh, we can set different parameters. Ah, the OTAs built into the chips you program those as part of programming all of the switching logic on your FPAA. So this isn't something that you can dynamically control with another signal. If you do want to have an OTA where you can dynamically control it, I think we'll need to build our own out of the individual PFET and NFET blocks. Okay, so let's just say that. Let's run this OTA example. And there's Modelica. It's making a plot. Ah, there we go. There's a plot. Look at that. All right. Now, what are they actually modeling here? Is this actually an OTA coming out into the capacitor? I think so. So here's an OTA with a feedback loop from the output to the negative. And I believe, ah, if I look at this, that is indeed a capacitor in our simulation. So this is a OTAC filter stage, one pole filter, and something like the Prophet 5 synthesizer by Sequential Circuits, there would have been four of these in a cascade with a feedback loop. Usually these are done in sort of real commercial analog synthesizers with a buffer, and then the output here is taken from the buffer for the feedback loop, but I noticed in integrated circuits, you pretty much just take the output here and just jam it right into the cap. So I don't know, it's a very different world operating on one of these kinds of chips than the more discrete-ish kind of BJT world that we're used to in a lot of the synthesizer designs that you'll see. So it'll take developing some new kinds of thinking to be able to use these capabilities. Of course, you can use these for all sorts of things besides synthesizers, and synthesizers were not the original goal of these particular devices. The main goal is for extreme low-power applications, but hey, I like synthesizers, so I was, thought we could maybe do some synthesis. All right, this is a C4. So this is a probably a four-capacitor device of some sort. Let's run it. There's Medellica again. 
before we leave, I'll look up what that is. Oh, okay. So here's it's responding to a score wave that looks like it's doing a high pass filter kind of behavior. Or not necessarily high pass, some sort of band pass, but with a significant resonant peak. This is a bias generator. Okay, let's run it and see what it does. Let's generate some bias. Oh, making some graphs or not. Compiled for the implicit solver, switching to implicit solver. Hmm, maybe I'm supposed to do something else with it, or maybe there's something about that particular example that's a bit buggy. More likely that I don't know what I'm doing. But that was fun. All right, let's uh, play with some new designs. Let's make a new design. No, I'm not actually going to do that here. This is all about just getting things installed. So install this Ubuntu image and let's have some fun. Oh, before I go, I said I would look up what Medelica is. It is a non-proprietary, object-oriented, equation-based language to conveniently model complex physical systems. That's pretty cool. So there's a language specification that you can get. Wee. Ah. So it's got a bunch of text stuff. What does Medelica code? Oh, here we go. Medelica code actually look like. Ah, it looks like this. And if you go to the Scilab website, again, it's MATLAB-ish, but it is not trying to be compatible with MATLAB directly. It looks like it has all the stuff that MATLAB does, but it's not trying to be as compatible as something like Octave is. It's trying to be its own thing. It's not that it's trying to be exactly MATLAB compatible and failing. It's just doing its own thing. Let's see. Xcos. Uh, Scilab is the textual part. Xcos is the graphical part. It's kind of like Simulink equivalent in a sense. Ah, model customization, Medallica blocks creation. So it looks like Scilab actually has a bit of Medallica built into it. 